ESG investing has been making headlines a lot lately, but for all the wrong reasons. You see, many people believe that ESG investing is the idea that you can make money through investing in companies all while doing good for people and the planet. Critics of ESG investing will say that it falls short of both of these goals, with statements such as ESG investing may even lose you money, and there is no way of knowing if ESG companies are actually doing good things and that they may even be worse for the planet. I'm here to tell you that this is not exactly Exactly the case, you just need to know what to look for and have a better understanding of what ESG investing actually is. While the common idea of ESG investing as a tool to create a better world is close to what it really is, it misses the true intention. ESG investing is the idea that by examining non-financial risk to a company and better managing those risks, a company is better able to ensure its long-term success and profitability. In ESG investing, risks include environmental, social, and governance risks. Examples of environmental risks could include the risk of climate change damaging farming abilities, water shortages interrupting the steel manufacturing process, loss of diversity preventing fishing abilities, and many others. Social risk could include things like employees leaving a company to seek higher wages elsewhere, employees striking against unsafe working conditions, and so on. Governance risks may include things like having a diverse board that is satisfactory to all stakeholders, avoiding bribes and corruption, and many others. All of these risks could damage a company's ability to profit in one way or another, may it be by directly impacting its ability to sell a product or service or through damaging its reputation. Companies that better manage these risks are often more profitable and attractive to investors because they are less risky than traditional companies. By managing these risks, companies do good for profit, people, and the planet. However, the benefit to people and the planet is more of a byproduct of ensuring profitability and protecting the company from these risks rather than the company doing good because it's the right thing. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, simply that the goal of ESG investing isn't exactly what people think it is. Companies are still doing good things for people and the planet, but it's more out of self-interest. Companies only manage their own risks and impacts and not those outside their own operations or ones where there are only small impacts involved. Companies exist to make a profit, so in my mind, if that's what it takes for them to better consider their impacts, then I don't think it's such a bad thing. But this isn't even the real issue critics have with ESG investing. I'm not in any way an investment expert, and this video is not intended to be investment advice. I have a background in sustainability and simply want to give my take on an issue that I think has gotten some wrong attention. The major problems people have with ESG investing can be broken down into two main issues. The claim that you cannot make money with ESG investing is simply not true. In fact, in one of the most comprehensive studies ever on ESG investing, researchers looked at over 2,200 individual studies on ESG investing and a company's financial performance. In about 90% of those studies, they found a non-negative relation and the large majority reported positive findings. Interestingly, in a different study, one group of researchers attempted to show that ESG funds don't lead to a profit. In this study, the researchers looked at a group of funds labeled as ESG funds on Morningstar, which is a site with a range of financial information and tools to help you make investment decisions. What they found was ESG firms appear to financially underperform compared to other funds. I know what you're thinking. Didn't I just say you can make money with ESG investing? This is where the study gets interesting. In this study, the researchers only looked at a list of self-reported ESG firms. These companies simply claimed to follow ESG practices even though there is no proof they follow through. The interesting part about this is that Morningstar has its very own tool known as Sustainalytics that is used to screen companies for their ESG practices for this very reason. For some reason, the researchers decided to not use this well-vetted list of companies screened by Morningstar and instead focused on companies that self-reported as ESG funds. This leads us to the other major criticism of ESG investing. Many companies try to claim they are ESG oriented even though they really aren't in order to attract positive attention and investments. A much less talked about issue is that companies that do have legitimate ESG practices can be hurt by this because they cannot stand out among all the noise. To combat these issues, ESG rating agencies collect data from various sources in order to come up with an ESG score for a company or a fund. They will look at all the possible related ESG risks to a company and use available data to determine how well a company addresses those risks. The ratings by these agencies are often so valuable to a company that a positive annual ESG rating from a prestigious rating agency often causes stock prices to rise. 
While these tools have been created to give investors a better understanding of the ESG landscape and in response to some of this criticism, critics will also point out flaws among the rating agencies and among their methodologies. I think all of this brings up an important point. So far, there is no real issue with ESG investing itself, rather the misinformation around and about ESG investing that causes problems. So how do we find credible ESG ratings that can deliver on their promise of revealing how well companies manage their ESG risks? As I said before, I have a background in sustainability, and part of that is in creating a sustainable rating system that has touched hundreds maybe thousands of companies across the world. The rating system is used by a different industry, but there are some key concepts I've learned over the years that are helpful with finding a solid ESG rating agency as well. Here are some of the key things to keep in mind about rating systems and in finding a rating agency. First, when trying to build a rating system, companies will often only focus on the impacts that matter the most in building their ratings. Only including the most important impacts is often referred to as materiality, and each company will decide what is and what is not considered material. The more information that you cram into a rating system, the harder it is to find relatable data sources and the less important each individual criteria becomes. The next thing I would keep in mind is to find a rating system that selects its criteria based on data and reason rather than something more arbitrary. For example, are climate change variables being included because they have a clear, data-proven impact on financial performance or simply because the rating agency thought it should be included. The goal of ESG investing, after all, is to reduce real threats to financial performance, and so the ratings should actually be built to do just that. Related to this, the next thing I would look for is that the company uses legitimate data sources to power their ratings. Critics of ESG investing will point out that different ESG rating agencies often use different criteria in their ratings and evaluate each of those criteria differently. One study even found that there is only about 30 to 70% overlap among the popular rating agencies. So how can a company be truly measuring its ESG impacts when different ratings from different agencies are also claiming to measure ESG properly, but all have different ESG ratings. It's not exactly a bad thing that different models have different results. Just look at weather data. Each weather station may say something different about the path of a hurricane, for example. This brings up the important point that each model is showing something very specific and often slightly different. For example, one study found that 56% of the difference in ESG ratings is simply because different agencies use different data to compare the very same variables. It would be as if I were to measure the weather based on average temperature and you do it based on the number of sunny days. They are both correct, just showing something slightly different. So as an investor using ESG data, you need to understand the ratings put forward by a company and what they do and don't actually mean. One of the last tips that I can give is to use data from a well-respected agency that gives you the data in a digestible way. For example, if a car agency told you the rating they are giving to a car you are interested in buying is four stars, what does that really mean to you? To me, it means almost nothing. What does four stars even mean? How much better is it than three stars? Is there anything higher than four stars? Four stars also tells me nothing about the individual performance of different parts of the car. Is getting four stars because it's really good on gas and affordable, but it's also bad on safety? This is why it's best to look for a rating system that gives a clear score, for example, from zero to 100. It also helps to get scores in individual areas. In the case of ESG investing, is there a separate score for environment, social, and governance? Can they break it down even further? If so, that data can be particularly useful, especially if you want to invest in companies that better align with your own goals. You may only care about the environment and social risks and less about governance, may it be because of your own values or because your investment strategy. Either way, a more transparent rating system gives you this ability. One of the companies that does this well, in my opinion, is one I mentioned earlier, Morningstar's Sustainalytics. I've personally seen Morningstar's Sustainalytics recommended by many prestigious financial platforms. I think Morningstar checks a lot of the boxes for things I mentioned to look out for. Still, just like with traditional investing, there is no guarantee you will or won't make money. You still need to know what you're doing and what to look for in terms of investing as well as ESG investing, and I hope that this video helped with at least part of that. If you want to learn more ways to save or make money through sustainability, check out these videos next. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, let me know by clicking the like button and subscribing to my channel. Otherwise, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.